Hello, I am the Jordan coach of the Virginia Vikavolds, and we are at the start of a new VGC Draft League experience. It's VBLS Season 3 time, baby. I'm so excited. Uh, VBLS last season was the most competitive, the most well-run, and the most supportive environment of any draft league I've been in. Uh, no offense to my SPS folks, y'all are definitely a close second in terms of my favorite league. But the VBLS just drafted over the past weekend, and people are asking, uh, do I have a good team? Uh, how do I fix my team? Who's got the best team? And so we're going to do power rankings. I'm going to spend three minutes analyzing each team's potential strengths and weaknesses as I see it. Eight teams in this video, eight teams in the next video. Um, I should say the level of competition was absurd. People grabbed all the value picks really quickly, uh, completely destroying my original draft plan. Uh, so even the coaches I have in the lower part of these draft rankings are strong. They're threatening, and I, I, I mean that. Uh, don't be upset if you're lower than you hoped because three-minute analyses do not cover everything. I miss things. Feel free to comment with you know some things I missed. Happy to hear your ideas. And uh, you know, this doesn't account for uh, coach skill. And there's nothing cooler than overperforming how people think you're going to do in the power rankings. Either it means you have a better team than we thought, or it just means you're that fantastic a coach um, that you overcome your team. So lots of opportunity there. So I have a rough rating system. I'm going to try to get beyond the numbers as much as I love numbers, because numbers without context uh, don't mean much. So rather than say Steelix has 200 base defense points and therefore this team has good defense, I want to talk about tools. You know, how does this team reduce their offense, boost their defense, survive whatever the opponent's doing, and then turn the tables on them? So uh, type synergies, you know, I won't talk about these two shared weaknesses are a problem. You're gonna have some shared weaknesses, but a shared weakness among your trick room setter and trick room sweeper is a bigger issue, for example. So trying to get to the heart of these teams, how I think they'll function in the season. I wanna start on a happier note, so I'll start with the top ranked team in this half. So number nine overall, and that's the Undella Unknowns, coached by Bohm. I like Bohm's team a lot. Uh, I think it's almost excellent, and we'll get to the almost in a sec. But you gotta start with the good stuff, and that's uh, pre uh, Heatran. Heatran is a bonkers, fantastic Pokemon. Fire, steel, amazing offense, amazing defense. Great coverage, too, for some reason. The only thing that stops Heatran from being the perfect Pokemon is a ground weakness, and Bohm has protected his Heatran by only having one ground weakness. So Heatran's power in context uh, goes way up. You know, all the ground moves are being brought just for Heatran. So if you're preparing for Heatran, you might not have enough for Primarina or Mudsdale or whatever the Dynamax option of the week is. And Mudsdale is a really good uh, Dynamax threat because Dragapult and what is it, Mimikyu get beat up. So they can self hit the Mudsdale and trigger multiple defense boosts with this ability. You can swagger the Mudsdale and uh, give it attack boosts with no confusion due to the other ability. Very strong. Now you could say uh, Heatran and Mudsdale share a water weakness, but that's where Cradley comes in. Uh, redirects water attacks to itself. Uh, very effective. Uh, Cradley was a bright spot um, in my last VBLS season. Um, Primarina, also a wonderful um, overall Pokemon, so a, um, a good max threat as well. Uh, I'm just going to assume that Primarina and Heatran cover each other's weakness as well, because they're both such good defensive typings. So that's some really good uh, synergy there. I bet I, I, I've avoided the icicle in the room a bit too long, uh, which is these six ice weaknesses. Uh, it's going to be very hard to switch into ice. Even some of these support pieces would die through Focus Ash due to a max hailstorm. Um, I mean, you can use Heatran for that, it double resists ice, but if it's playing the switch into ice game, then it's not doing the Dynamax offense role that it is so good at. And uh, Primarina is also an ice resist, uh, so I imagine you bring Heatran and Primarina to most games, which is not an issue at all, but those are the key pieces to get through before uh, ice just uh, eviscerates the whole team. Um, grass is also an issue um, for weaknesses here, and Heatran is just a lot of, of weight on the Heatran. If it has to be the defensive piece, it can't be the offensive piece. Um, Dragapult's you know, power in context is not as high um, because they're always bringing ice, and opponents are also going to always bring ghost moves because um, there's only one ghost resist, and the only trick room setter, I believe, is uh, Mimikyu, so um, that's a ghost weakness. So Dragapult's gonna struggle to do more than one thing. It always does get to do that one thing because it is so fast. 
I like the fighting immunities uh, to cover up the fighting weaknesses, uh, but overall I wonder how this team's going to be able to avoid super effective damage a lot of the time. Um, it seems pretty tricky in that way, but there is a collection of uh, lots of good stuff on this team. Not only the attackers, um, as I mentioned, but you know, Priority, Prankster, uh, Lipard, and uh, Tailwind plus Midspeed Mons. Um, I think Bohm will be ready to take names with one or two transactions. I figure there's got to be something better for this team than Corfish and Sandslash. Yes, they are the low tier picks, but um, even if Sandslash can do cool things with Sandrush and Aerodactyl has fast Sandstorm, then it's just going to have trouble because there's always going to be ice and grass in the opponent's game plan. And so um, knowing that that's already there, these guys will struggle to do much. And I wonder if there's something else that can balance out what's going on and maybe contribute in a whole new way, maybe some kind of other um, defensive piece. But it's gonna be great to see this team piloted. Um, plenty of offense, plenty of fun things on here. I'm gonna move on to, if you're in the VBLS, you know, already know who's at the bottom of the list, and that's the guy who used a random number generator when drafting. Uh, Steve's known to be one of the best coaches in the league, season one champion, won a couple side tournaments, made playoffs last season despite a Gen 4 only team. So gave himself this, this additional challenge. I think he bit off a little bit more than he could chew. Uh, because, oof, like I, I can't even analyze this team as a real team, well, I, I can, but you, normally I want to say, what are they going for when they pick this? But they wasn't going for anything, the computer selected it. But I'm going to talk about what I think will be the most effective parts of this team, which is the offense and speed. Uh, Terrakion's very powerful, um, Raichu and Tornadus Brutal Swing can make uh, Terrakion even more powerful with Justified. There's also stuff like Crobat Absorb to proc weakness policy. Very powerful uh, piece. Tornadus also uh, very powerful on both the physical and special side as well as its uh, Prankster priority move pull. Prankster Tailwind, Prankster Rain Dance for there's like a Swift Swimmer. Uh, Dreadnaw, Swift Swim Dreadnaw. Uh, Crobat is unfortunately mostly a worse Tornadus in this case, but it's also a fast and good Pokemon. Uh, Raichu covers um, all of these electric weaknesses from the flyers uh, due to its lightning rod ability and it has a highly annoying but highly effective support uh, move pool. Um, Raichu and Ninetales can also proc the weakness policies on the flyers. So that's some good like hyper offense going on here. Um, the issue is Trick Room, or the issue is any time um, Steve can't go first if, if a team is even faster or if they can set Trick Room because there's not much that can compete in Trick Room. Um, Trevenant does have Imprison. There's some uh, various tools that could maybe stop Trick Room, like some good taunters, um, a fake out, uh, Imprison Trevenant, as I said. Uh, but once the opponent is going first, these attackers are going to really struggle to take a hit. You know, surprise, surprise, the team that's randomly selected has typing weaknesses. Um, Rock is the hugest one. Uh, very, very tough. Um, Terrakian and Como O are the only resists. Como O I never actually see used, but could be effective in the context of this team as a pretty good uh, mixed attacker. Trevenance is also pretty good, but I can't see it actually ever succeeding in Trick Room. There's just not enough support for a Trick Room mode. So the combined lack of answers in Trick Room slash the lack of durability anytime the opponent can survive whatever uh, Steve's attacker is doing um, make it really tough to use this team. You know, Steve's a great team builder. I, I imagine he'll pull out um, some good game plans and a couple of wins, but uh, I hope he uh, makes a couple of transactions and not randomized transactions to make this into a more competitive team. I'll move on to the next squad, which is coached by Beans, early contender for funniest new coach. Um, his name is The Baked Beans. Um, has some solid stuff. Um, you know when you see solid stuff, even near the bottom of the power rankings, that you have a league full of killers uh, with good drafts. Um, Beans grabbed Metagross as his first pick, which is a very good pick because Metagross is the number one overall VGC Series 7 Draft League Pokemon. I will not accept rebuttals at this time. Um, Rotom Heat is surprisingly heat uh, in this context. Um, both it and, what is it, Claydol levitate, so Metagross can fire off risk-free earthquakes that these two dodge. Rotom Heat's just a, an overall excellent Pokemon I used in another draft league. Um, has a good supportive move pool, um, reasonably good defense, and few weaknesses. 
I could see Rotom Heat, Claydol, Metagross, and maybe something like Serena forming a pretty good core of attackers. The, the issue is all the shared weaknesses. Um, it's going to be tough for Claydol to do anything, sharing a water weakness with Rotom, sharing the ghost and dark weakness with Metagross. And that's actually, that's the biggest thing. You know, everything else is secondary to what stops this team from being one of the best teams, which is this giant ghost and dark weakness. We have one, triple psychic and two ghosts. Very, very, very hard uh, to do anything against a team with a solid ghost and dark answer. You know, what, how do we beat the Galarian Moltres team? I guess maybe the electric attackers. How do we beat Umbreon? You know, Umbreon can just sit there forever and uh, threaten all of these guys. You threaten Metagross with a foul play, threaten the special attackers with a snarl. It's gonna be very hard to beat. And I wish there was something like a, a dark type and a fairy type. You know, from dark and fairy type offense can maybe ward off those ghost and dark uh, attackers. Jellicent, this is a good combination here because uh, Jellicent has special bulk and uh, Copagregis has physical bulk. But again, joint weaknesses. Um, this is the entire trick room mode is weak to uh, Ghost and Dark. So um, it, it kind of hampers the whole trick room mode um, when all three trick room setters and the trick room sweeper of choice. I don't really see another great trick room sweeper. Uh, Chansey's not a sweeper. Cloyster maybe once in a blue moon. Um, but if we're talking about what to change here, it's one of these weaknesses to something that resists all of these uh, Pokemon that are likely to be strong, um, like the Spectriers. How do we beat a Spectrier? Um, a Dark type, a Fairy type, a Normal type, um, that's not Chansey. A Normal type uh, Max Threat in the low end, another Trick Room Sweeper would be pretty nice. Now I won't count out um, Beans' is Fast Mode, because uh, there's plenty of good options there. Um, Raikou Bulldoze onto Metagross, provides speed control as well as a weakness policy proc. Ultimately, Metagross's weaknesses are not really weaknesses, um, so it gets a pass on the Ghost and Dark stuff because Metagross always finds the way to survive, proc its weakness policy, and now it's got double attack. Um, but uh, Rotom Heat's got fast Electro Webs, you could scarf it. Uh, Prankster Meowth Stick, uh, T Wave is to uh, uh, not to be underestimated. These kind of supportive tools can help deny Trick Room. They can also help him guarantee Trick Room. There's redirection in Volcarona. There's fake out on Meow Stick. Uh, but what do we do with that Trick Room mode? If it, Metagross is always the attacker, then there's just too much attention on it and there's gonna be too many counters prepared for it. Uh, so an alternate max threat in the Trick Room mode is what I think this team um, could need. Um, Serena is another uh, solid piece. Um, prevents uh, priority moves in the opponent's side and is pretty strong. The other final thing that I would talk about to really realize the potential of the good stuff is something to help Metagross win in fast mode. I'd like to see a fast Icy Wind, um, a fast Electro Web, only you know, Rotom with a Scarf is the only fast Speed Dropper, or Tailwind of course. Metagross loves Tailwind uh, being able to go first. Um, so something to help out these mid-speeders in the fast mode, um, something to make the trick room mode a little more multi-dimensional, but there's abundance of good things to work with here. I look forward to seeing this team after a couple of transactions. Could be pretty strong. We're moving on to the next team, which is the Great British Blastoises, coached by Hawkeye Ben, another new coach, and some cool sand synergies here. You know, Gigalith brings the sand with him into battle, Dracozolt and Stoutland have Sand Rush, so they get double speed in sand. Uh, two ground types are don't take sand damage. Coco is also a very good Pokemon. Some in the league don't agree, but I think Coco is a quality S tier, uh, one of the better ones if you take advantage of its mixed attacking, speed control with Electroweb, terrain, and Sceptile is one guy that takes advantage of the terrain. Uh, Sceptile has Unburden. I don't know why it's not listed here, but it has Unburden. So Coco uh, brings the electric terrain, a Sceptile's electric C gets triggered, and then it becomes ungodly fast. So good stuff so far. All of this deserves praise. Uh, but I want to get to what I think is the biggest overall issue uh, with the team. One of the trickiest things in VGC is the balance between trying to take your turns first and making sure your turns matter. A uh, very common, effective way to play VGC is to have one Mon making sure its partner goes first and then the partner doing a ton of damage. You know, this team has many ways of providing that kind of speed control. One of the best ways to use Persian is fast Icy Winds. One of the best ways to use Gengar is fast Icy Winds. Coco does fast Electrowebs. Sigilith offers Tailwind. 
what else? What else do I have listed here? Sandrush, Dracozold, and Stoutland are very, very fast. Uh, Sceptile with the Unburden boost is very, very, very fast. But what is all the speed for? Uh, what on this team can output a ton of damage in one turn besides Dracozold? Maybe Gengar? Um, I, I worry that it's a bit too frail to be a viable max threat, though maybe you could invest into bulk um, in Gengar and have the partner provide speed. That, that could work reasonably well. Um, but the, the damage numbers on some of these faster guys are not that, um, not that high. You know, Sceptile is only 105. Coco is usually running special and it's only 95, maybe 115 physical sometimes, but not quite enough to take one hit KOs a lot of the time. And then these guys get one shot in return. Um, you're risking if the if any of these uh, on the fast side are, well, I guess not Stoutland, Stoutland. Pretty bulky boy, um, but these five, if any of them max, they might not get to use all three of their Dynamax turns before being gone. And so that's a little bit of a risk, is lots of speed, but anytime the opponent can survive one hit, and they usually can, then uh, these guys are in trouble. Gigalith is super strong and super tanky, so that's another good pick. Um, the other, it's the other lead damage dealer as far as I can see after Dracozol. Uh, but the main way you allow Gigalith to go first is Trick Room, and the only Trick Room setters are... Gengar and Sigil Sigilith, you know, both frailer mons. Is Sigilith frail? I think it's frail. It's, it's okay, but it has a lot of weaknesses, and so there you might struggle to set Trick Room sometimes, and they are both fast, so they don't actually personally benefit from the Trick Room. To me, this team has a chasm of speed between the fast boosted speed and then nothing really in the middle that really benefits from that speed, uh, from the speed controllers. Uh, when Stoutland and Gigalish, they're like the only mid speeders, but they can just sand rush and be faster than everything. I guess when Dracozold is hustle for maximum damage, when Stoutland is bulky intimidate support, then they could benefit from Tailwind and Icy Wind. I could get into the other concerns, such as five ground weakness, particularly on three of the main attackers, Dracozold, Gigalith, and yeah, Coco. Yeah, Gengar too, if, if it's going to be the attacker as well. So. Um, the main thing I want Ben to think about though, and others as they're drafting teams, is the balance between speed and damage output. Sceptile through Sigilus are more about speed. I'd love to see one or two of them drop for a bulky uh, Mon, something like a Incineroar, Metagross, Primarina, you know, a discount version of those guys. But something that would benefit from the speed and then would be both bulky and fast. That would be pretty compelling from my vantage point. Let's go into the next team, KC and the Californian Colossals. KC's team has a lot of interesting synergies on it. Synergies in all different directions. You know, Cinderace is the centerpiece, fast, versatile attacker. KC should have no issues taking control of some games with Max Cinderace or Speed Swap or Bombi. Uh, you could make the slower attackers like Escavalier, Guzzlord, Munchlax. Um, they could be pretty overwhelming if they're also fast. Uh, Indeedy Psychic Terrain is pretty cool. Um, both it and Slowbro have terrain boosted expanding forces, that's, so that's a fair amount of offense right there. Uh, Excelgor Palisand is a, a very specific uh, interaction where Excelgor can trigger multiple defense boosts given uh, Palisand's water compaction ability, make an unkillable sandcastle. Uh, that can be uh, compelling some weeks. There's a solid Trick Room mode here. Uh, enabled by Tangrowth Redirection and a bulky Taunt Immune uh, Trick Room Setter in Slowbro, and then lots of very slow physical attackers. Um, there's also Competitive Milotic, uh, protects those physical attackers from Intimidates, and also a solid all-around Mon that can be brought whether Casey's going his fast mode or his slow mode. Uh, the main thing I think holds the Colossals back from a higher ranking is the high potential inconsistency I see in these duos and modes. If the opponent has their own terrain control, Indeedee and Slowbro aren't that strong. A lot of these fast support mons are vulnerable to fake out. Uh, they could get double up and KO'd, even through Protect. You know, Selgor and Rabambi are that frail. Psychic Terrain potentially protects these guys from fake out, but it seems very tricky to execute, where Indeedee needs to come in for the terrain, and then this 
Um, frail support piece needs to switch in, and then also its intended ally, so it can get the speed swap or the you know the water compaction ability. So just uh, tricky to execute. Um, I like also a fast support of Cinderace. It's got the coaching and core change and ally switch and um, snarl and other stuff like that, but. I don't think Casey's going to get much mileage out of that kind of Cinderace because it's redundant with these other uh, Pokemon that would also be uh, vulnerable to fake out and one shots. Uh, a lot of the self hitting, uh, self boosting uh, strategies here are shut down by redirection, which lots of teams have this year. Um, the Trick Room mode has some shared weaknesses with both uh, the Redirector and the Trick Room Sweeper sharing that fire weakness. They both hate fire. And uh, Munchlax actually resists fire, so that's kind of uh, a nice balance. But both F. Scavalier and Munchlax uh, are very vulnerable to burns. Munchlax can always just explode, though. Uh, and uh, if Casey flipped in his ghost, that could be pretty effective uh, to just self destruct at a moment's notice with Munchlax. Uh, the team is threatening, and it should be tough to prep against. I see all these cool combinations, and I commend Casey for putting them together. Uh, but I see a lot of it is tough to execute. Um, without the right boosts, speed control, and positioning all coming together, the squad might struggle to keep pace offensively and defensively. Uh, but it should be a fun team to watch, and it could be more effective than I think. Onwards to the 12th spot, occupied by the Primarina Primers and your boy, a returning coach, has the largest speed gap um, I've ever seen between uh, two Mons on a Draft League roster, probably will ever see. Uh, you would think that everything being 80 or lower besides Aleki um, would be a problem for winning in fast mode, but there's a surprising number of speed control options on this team. I'm kind of up on it. I think it has um, a lot of potential. Um, but Reggie Aleki is the fastest mon there is. Um, Electra Web to speed things down and to bring them in range of Mammoth Wine and others. Uh, Drippalim's Limb's got Tailwind, uh, which Dracovish and the mid speed mons really appreciate. Drifblim itself can become really fast when its unburdened uh, ability is triggered, when it loses its item to you know, uh, Grassy Terrain off the wacky, or Regieleki Assurance uh, triggering Drifblim's weakness policy. Drifblim becomes super fast. Uh, Corviknight is another Tailwind option, and Corviknight is bulky enough that it doesn't much care about the speed situation. Dracovish can easily run a Choice Scarf to make it fast and deadly. Purloin is Prankster, so it goes first, and Prankster T-Wave is effective speed control. A uh, number of priority moves on this team, Blacky and Purloin especially, and um, they both have fake out, so that provides you boy some early momentum as they work on their speed control. The Trick Room mode is solid too, uh, a, pow a pair of powerful Trick Room sweepers in Drampa and Kaparaja, set by Musharna. I suppose Hapowdon is there too. Um, it also gives uh, Dracovish uh, Sand Rush, so that's another speed control opportunity. Um, this can be a fast team once it gets up and running, but I worry it won't always get up and running. Reggie Alecki and Mammoth Swine are pretty frail. Um, Purloin is also not built to last. Uh, running up against a faster fake out than uh, your boys got is gonna be a problem. They might not ever get off of their back foot in that situation. Maybe they just protect and uh, reassess turn two. But I like the bulk more in the Trick Room mode. Um, it's clear that if your boy wants Trick Room mode, the opponent might just uh, spend the Trick Room turn by boosting itself. And Drampa and Kaparasha still will get O-Code by a fair amount of boosted stuff. I don't see a lot of obvious weakness policy proccing on the slow end, so I worry this team won't be able to keep pace damage-wise in that situation. Uh, maybe they'll need to do like some kind of Prankster Charm plus uh, trick Room, or um, they're going to start by weakening things with the Trick Room and then flipping into these guys who can then overwhelm. This is a team I very much think could surprise us. Uh, the power on Dracovish, Mamoswine, and Regilecki is never to be underestimated, and your boy's ability to assess the speed situation in team building and during the game could make the difference between a decent team and a force to be reckoned with. I look forward to our match in week one also. Moving on to 11, the Seattle Supersonic Booms, coached by Oh My God, It's Daddy. Yes, this coach has over the course of years convinced uh, his gaming friends to call him Daddy. Uh, Daddy said of his draft, I'm getting weird with it this time, and I very much agree. This is the strangest draft team 
um, we've got. And I thought it was cool uh, that my team uses some of the mons that uh, typically don't get a ton of love or attention, but nothing compares to the wackiness of Tapu Bulu and Buzzwool and using your first two picks on super fast Whimsicott and super slow Stack Attacka. You win. This is the coolest team. <laughs> Uh, the big challenge will be coming up with a cohesive squad of six each week. There's definitely some effective combinations tucked into here. Uh, Riolu can do prankster coaching, can proc policies, can do priority copycat trick room, stack attack a gimmick. It's quite good. Um, the uh, Clawitzer can get uh, terrain boosted. Um, terrain pulses, and uh, so Bulu can set grassy terrain for it, Whimsicott can do priority terrain setting for Clawitzer, and Whimsicott can also do beat up onto Lucario, um, just multiple justify boosts make it very deadly until it's dead, of course. Um, but there's uh, some standard good stuff um, to balance out uh, the, com the combinations, which is you know, Trick Room, Tailwind, lots of priority, uh, defensive backbone pieces like Sylveon and Turtonator, and then some combinations I sh I'm sure I don't see. Um, I don't think it's necessarily terrible that Daddy has Triple Fighting, Triple Steel, uh, quad fairy. Uh, these are some of the better typings overall, and sometimes you can use secondary typings uh, to balance each other out. Um, for example, Celesteela and Zapdos um, are both flying types but don't share any weaknesses. So three steel types mean three poison immunities, which the, helps out the fairies a lot. I imagine Daddy will team build to avoid the worst of the shared weaknesses, but these are already tricky to use mons. Uh, it might be tough to find six in a given week that work together and might not get totally blown up. Uh, start with the five fire weaknesses on everything above uh, 60 speed. Uh, Clawitzer and Turtonator are the only fire resists, and those aren't the bring every game type in my opinion, so uh, not much to block the fire. Flying moves are very effective against this whole team that isn't Stack Attacka. Ground moves are also very deadly. Um, there are two wide guard users to, bro to block Heat Wave and Earthquake and other spread moves, but the single target max moves are going to be very deadly. I would find it kind of stressful to play with uh, a team with all these quad weaknesses. You know, one random Poison Jab and Tapu Bulu is toast. You know, one. Aura Sphere and Stack Attacka is gone, which is rough when Stack Attacka is probably supposed to leave the team some weeks. There aren't a ton of backup uh, max threats with all these, you know, baby mons. Uh, so while this team will be very challenging to prep against, you know, definitely have, there's no, nothing foolproof against both Whimsicott and Stack Attacka, some teams will have the right answers and they'll start with a big advantage. And some of the teams that are more balanced will be able to figure out what Daddy's doing and by game two or three, um, maybe take advantage of uh, that strategy. So uh, Daddy is a strong competitor. We'll see what they have planned. Uh, if this team does well, it could shake up how we think about drafting and team building. So kind of excited to see that. So we'll move on to the final team of this half, which is the Cincinnati Minchinos, coached by James Dalton Bell. After the most extreme team in the leagues, just seeing you know more like uh, staple defensive mons like Arcanine and Blastoise is frankly calming to me. Um, there's some quality components on James' team, most notably the Thunderous, the first pick, overall pick in the draft. It's one of the most versatile mons in draft, with great offensive stats, and a, a nice prankster uh, priority move pool. Arcanine is good at everything, offense, defense, speed, support. I wish James had not grabbed it four picks before I was supposed to. Um, but what stops me from putting this team in the top half is the lack of X Factor. Now that's kind of hard to explain, I suppose, but I imagine I'm missing some synergies because James is a very experienced uh, player, but I don't see where the killers are. I don't see how this team is supposed to generate enough offense. Um, Arcanine and Blastoise are generally passive mons. You know, Arcanine has an option to become a killer with uh, Justified, but I don't see any fast beat up options to trigger the Justified boost. Um, Justified Arcanine is not as good as Support Arcanine, but it would be nice to have that option. Um, Blastoise's G-Max Cannonade um, can do a lot of damage over time, um, but a decent water type will avoid the Cannonade and will also take out Arcanine, um, or will handle the Arcanine. So Blastoise's Shell Smash is the only other thing that comes to Mon that makes Blastoise not totally passive. 
um, but Shell Smash is kind of hard to pull off without redirection here. Um, Cybertron recently featured Thunderous and Avalug on his channel. Thunderous uses Priority Swagger onto Avalug um, to give it attack boost, but the confusion is blocked by its own tempo ability. Uh, this looks effective as a surprise on the ladder, but I can't see it working as much against prepared teams. You can uh, just fire special attacks into Avalug because it's so slow, he has to take two attacks before it, it gets to move. I'm not sure the Trick Room option with Uxie setting Trick Room and Avalug is that effective, um, considering all the fire weaknesses as well in the slow end. Um, Naganadel is definitely a killer though. Um, what is it, 127 uh, special attack and very fast um, and uh, farther uh, boosts on each KO. I do imagine teams can Oko Naganadel uh, with ice moves that they're probably going to bring for Thunderous anyway. There. Um, but some games, Naganadel Hyper Offense, I imagine, will be effective. When I lay it all out like this, there's there actually are like a fair amount of options um, to make the offense work, um, but it's going to require thoughtful play from James. Uh, I already know that this team can play great defense. It's got double intimidate, double fake out, uh, snarl, eerie impulse off Thundy, um, spore, yawn, uh, all parting shot on Pangoro. It's got it's got lots of defense. Um, I already ranked the Minchinos, you know, above the past. Six teams we uh, went over, but this team has the potential, I think, to over for perform uh, the placement I've given it here. Um, you have to figure out when uh, the opponent is, is going to try to take advantage of James' passive team and try to boost itself, and when he can surprise them with like a choice band or a life orb to just have way more offense than they were bargaining for, and when James can succeed with the methodical, slow-paced game that I think this team is more inclined uh, to play. So that's it, right? Okay, the other eight I'm gonna go over. Um, I, I'm going home this this weekend, but after that I'm gonna hit the last eight teams. There are some absolutely ridiculous teams in this batch. I am certainly do not have the best team um, in this league. So excited to show it. Um, if you came from the SPS, I hope you stick around for these videos. I'm gonna do team builders and live commentaries. And if you're a random person that found this video on YouTube, we're doing educational VGC Draft League content as much as I possibly can. I hope you like, I hope you comment, I hope you subscribe. I hope you get something out of this video. So take care.